So when you're out and about in the hills in winter, there's going to come a time when kicking steps or cutting steps isn't going to be efficient enough for what you're going to do. And there's going to be times when you're coming onto snow slopes that are either so firm or icy that your boots aren't going to bite. And you're going to need to think about putting some crampons on. It's always worth bearing in mind that you often want to put your crampons on sooner rather than later, because too often you'll find yourself halfway up a slope, slipping around on your feet, thinking, oh, I really wish I'd put my crampons on sooner. Worth carrying your crampons in a crampon bag just because it helps protect everything else in your rucksack and makes them obvious and easy to sort of get hold of. When you put your crampons on, it's good to find a nice flat area because you'll often need to take your rucksack off and pull a few bits and pieces out of your bag. Also, when you're putting your crampons on, it's a really good idea to stay standing. And if you're not used to putting your crampons on, you'll be tempted to sit down. But often, as soon as you sit down on any sort of slippery slope, that'll result in a bit of a slide potentially happening. So if we can stay stood up, get our crampons out, lay them to the hill so we're stepping into them, then that's a really good way of putting your crampons on. So let's get cramponed up. So when it comes to wearing crampons, the first thing that you want to do is make sure that crampons fit. And you don't want to find that out when you're actually on the hill and you really need to use them. You want to find that out back down the comfort of your own home or back down in the valley. Um, to find out whether it fits properly, you need to make sure that the crampon fits your boot well making sure that it's long enough, making sure that the crampon's compatible with the boot that you're wearing, and just making sure that the fitting system, and there's a few different fitting systems with crampon, suits the boot that you're wearing. So a number of different things need to be sort of discovered. Once you've got the right crampon for the right boot, you need to make sure that the contact area between the sole of the boot and the top of the crampon is flush, so there's no big gaps, and your toe piece sits neatly in the front of the crampon. And when the heel piece is on, making sure that it all snaps in or fits really nice and tight. Your crampon shouldn't be loose at all on your boot. So we'll have a look at putting a crampon on. On your nice safe flat spot, I lay my crampons out into the hillside so I can be standing safely on one foot and stepping up into the hill with the foot that you're fitting the crampon onto. From there, I'm in a good position just to reach down and lean forward. And whichever fitting system you use, this is a heel clip, you just want to line it up nice and neatly and just slot it into place. Quick look around just to make sure it's all fitting quite well. And then just taking the strap. And the strap's really there just to secure the crampon in place and to keep it held on your foot so that it won't come off in any of the situations when you're moving around on the hill. If they're your own crampons and you have the time, then you definitely want to trim the strap down to get it as neat as possible. Because if the strap that you're tightening on the crampon is too long and you have to tie it away, this just creates extra faff and often it'll come undone when you're moving around in the hills. So having a nice neat tail that's still easy enough to tighten with gloves on but you don't need to tie away each time works really nicely. Worth just double checking both crampons before you start moving off or even asking a friend just to have a quick look because they can see around your feet quite well. Once you're happy with the fit of the crampons, then you're free to use them. So there's a few different techniques that you can use when you're cramponing around the hillside for ascent, descent and traversing around. The technique that would be most common or the one that you'd use the most when you're moving around in the hill would be flat footing. And the reason for this is you'll want to engage as many points at the base of the crampon as you possibly can for security when you're moving around on the hill. So when it comes to walking across flat ground, quite happily you can just step and land your foot reasonably flat on the flatter ground and that'll give you a nice amount of security as you walk around. But the steeper the slope becomes as you start ascending, keeping your feet flat and walking straight up the hill becomes more and more difficult. What you'll then need to look to do in ascent is to start bringing your feet around to the side or even bring them down towards the fall line of the hill a bit, still keeping your feet nice and flat. And this allows you to flat foot whilst comfortably ascending the slope as well. 
you'll work out where you want your foot to lie and how you want it to sit depending on the angle of the slope that you're coming on to but generally the steeper the slope the more you point your feet down the hill to allow them to lie flat if you're looking at traversing across the slope again just flat footing and unlike when you're kicking steps rolling your ankle in this time you want to flat foot it and almost roll your ankle out a wee bit so each foot step is landing flat on the slope and all the points of your crampons are biting all together when it comes to descending down the slope the temptation if you're taking a normal sort of walking gait is to land your heel first and then come on to the front or front area of your crampons again we still want to arrive on all the points at the same time so this time we want to flatten the foot off and almost sit down into that sort of step so you bring your bum down into an almost like a toilet seat position so you're allowing your foot to land flat on the slope in descent to begin with this might feel a little bit sort of awkward but after a while you'll get quite used to it When it comes to ascending a steep slope, using a flat-footed technique still works very well and it's the most resting of any of the techniques that you can use when you're cramponing because it keeps your heel down, your foot flat and you can actually ascend very well. If you wanted to ascend a steeper slope more directly and quicker then you're better off using a technique called front pointing. This is when you want to engage certainly the front two points of your crampons and also the secondary row of points on your crampons as well. So this time you're not looking to use all of the points but just the front four lots of points at your front foot. Your foot's going to strike the steep snow slope and you want to keep your heel raised and you need to work reasonably hard to keep that heel from collapsing the footstep when you step off it. The temptation might be to kick in and drop the heel but as you move up the slope you just want to keep that heel up so those front four lots of points are biting into the slope as you move up the slope. When it comes to descending a steep slope flat footing does work very well but it often leaves you feeling quite exposed to the fall line and the hill that you've got down below you. Turning into the hill and coming into that front point position and using that in descent is often a very good way of feeling a lot safer because you're facing into the slope and also you've taken away that exposure of the, of the slope behind you. So coming into front point in descent it's exactly the same technique except in reverse just remembering to keep that heel up and kicking the toes in and just nice and slowly and nice and steadily if it becomes too steep to stay upright just daggering your axe using the pick of your axe into the slope and staying in that front point position gives you a very stable secure way of descending